Hey there, this is Lewis. This is the Salient Fundamentals class. This is part two, spacing and content. So the first thing we are going over is padding. We're gonna go through transform uh, properties and text color properties inside the elements of Salient. So let's check it out. So padding, now I'm assuming that everyone has just a general knowledge of what it is. You'll definitely get a feel for what it is in case uh, you're just getting into it or just learning about but I'm going to be focusing on how it works within sailing so But I'm pretty sure it'll become pretty obvious as we go uh, move forward with it. So um, So let's look at the different padding options inside of Salient so what you need to know is that there's basically like three different padding property areas that you can uh, change and update. We'll start with the row, which you can see by the blue outline there. Do you see the blue outline? Now it's orange because it's column. But if you hover over that, hover over it, then Salient gives you a selection of blue that allows that that basically you know lets you know where uh, everything is. Click on the pencil icon. Click Edit Row. Then. On general, you're going to scroll down to spacing and transform. And here you can do top, bottom, left, right. So you can do pixels or you can do uh, percentages. That's what Salient describes in this, in this article here. Um, and you can do like say 100 uh, pixels. That's what it would be. And if we click save changes, you should see a difference. Boom, 100 pixels. Now, I don't recommend using pixels almost ever. With Salient, it's usually best to use something like percentage. 5%. There you go, 5%. 3% is a very popular one. So just memorize, I mean, just think 3. 3%. And that's usually a really good spacing. Now, uh, now if you... Uh, now, if you look at these three different uh, toggle icons, there's a desktop, a tablet, and a phone. So if you click on each one, it does a separate um, sizing and dimension um, for padding that you can enter for each one. This is gonna be your best friend whenever you go into mobile view. So if you scroll over here, you see this, Right, let's exit out. That's the mobile view. So it's going to be very important um, because if you're, if you, you know, if you're actually doing this for, for work, um, you're going to want to be as mobile friendly as possible. So just for just so you know, um, all of the elements have that. Now, if you click over column, edit row. I'm sorry, edit column. Then here's a padding, column padding, right there. And if you click on, see, it has uh, different percentages. So Salient likes to work with percentages a lot. Um, column padding position, top, right, left, right, top. Usually I do all sides with a lot of things, but it depends on what it is. It can be, you know, on the right, on the left. It, it depends on the on the um, design. And the last is the text block. So usually if you go into general, then I mean, if you go into design options, this gives you actually very good, if you don't have a really good understanding yet of CSS or HTML, you need to study this and play around with it. Um, it'll give you a really good example of this is, I mean, this is perfect. I mean, this is what padding is. This is the element itself. This is padding. This is the border around the padding. And this is the margin. So let's say we want 10% there. And then we want three pixels of border. Make the border black. And then maybe, you know, zero margin just to kind of test it out. See what the secret's all about. Okay, yeah, it's weird. So lots of padding there, 
the border. Oh, where's the border? Oh, sorry. Got to set the border radius. There you go. Oops. And you got to set a border style. Yeah. I sometimes, I don't know about myself, sometimes. Yeah, sorry about that. So just, oh, and <laughs> just in case you didn't see that. So if you want to test out the border, so you can kind of see how that works with everything, which I would highly recommend, you you can do black, three pixels, solid, border radius. So that kind of checks out the border. Now let's let's take this out because that doesn't really look that good. It looks weird. Okay, ah, but you know what? I don't like that either. Let's do 3%. There we go. Maybe two. That's better, okay. So it's those, in those three different places is where you can change the padding, okay? Next, we're gonna look at transform. So it allows you to move the row from its current position according to the parameters given for the x-axis and the y-axis. Translating x or y does not affect the flow of the rest of the document. Similar to padding, these values can be separately uh, can be set separately for the desktop, tablet, smartphone viewports, which is awesome. Okay, so let's do an example of that here. Let's do another row. Let's do a different color. I feel like you're gonna have to, probably gonna need that to see it. And we'll do full width background. Make the content kind of stand out. Okay. Now let's put an image in here because I think that's probably going to be the easiest way that you can kind of see what this transform stuff does. Cool. There we go. You know what, I, let's reset the row a little bit. I don't like the way it's sized. So that's a good way to change the, see? Now that looks cool, right? That looks cool, I like that. Let's give a little bit of padding there. Oh, and I also forgot to mention that you can lock these. So you can do it to where they're the same, which is awesome. Don't forget, you can always change. Uh, if you need to do something in mobile, you can do it specifically like that. Otherwise, it will inherit these uh, feet, these uh, the original parameters you set. Okay. Now that looks pretty. That looks awesome. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, let me just add some text here. Bear with me. I just want to make sure I can kind of show you the correct things. Okay, very cool. Then we'll do white. There, that's good. Okay. And let's move that to center. Okay, now let's take this over here, drag that element over, drag the text box over inside the column area, the third column that we made. Then click on the pencil icon here. I'm gonna kind of try to do a cool effect and then we'll go click on, so uh, in the column settings, click general, scroll down, then go to transform, go do something like negative 100, no, 150, click save, sick, 
That looks awesome. Okay. And then let's go back and let's do something like let's see negative 150 and see what that we'll see see how that works. Oh, no. New no, new. No. Uh-uh. I don't like that. Oh, I like that. I like that. Dang. Okay. That is very cool. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, um so that's, you know, that's just a little bit of uh that's that's a little bit of what you can do with the transform ele element. Really really cool stuff. Uh just you need to make sure that when we go into something like mobile, it doesn't just disappear from the face of this earth. Um, you may have to, again, change the elements inside to make it look and make it work right, or maybe do a whole different element altogether inside of mobile itself and hide the desktop version. You, you just, you know, those are your two options, really. Or, you know, do CSS and fix it that way. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and click Publish. I mean, you don't have to click Publish. I'm, I'm going to click Publish. Uh, and just save it because I like how that's coming out. Looks pretty cool. Okay, so we are on to text color. So uh, it's this is pretty self-explanatory. It's text colors, but but I'll show you why because um, th it does the entire row. I feel like a lot of people don't. Um, don't use this and they really really should because it's amazing and it's like a hidden gem inside of salient um you might already know it but um this is pretty cool so there's two things i want to show you first let's look at let's look at this real quick um let's create another row let's add a text element let's see Okay, heading, okay, and then we're just going to save that, right? And then let's go to the row, click on the pencil icon, scroll down all the way, and you should see content, right? Instead of dark, let's go light. Boom, that is amazing, isn't it? Now think about that. If you have like a lot of text, and you don't, and you have different elements, and you don't want to turn. So, say you you have a custom heading, text block, and you have all this different, and and all these different elements have that. You just with one click, you can turn all of them white. Now, a good thing to note is that if you do, like, if one of those elements is a custom headline, and you do it, um, and you do like a different color or something, you're not going to be able to actually. Um, it may override the this rule here so that's happened to me before so just take note of that um, if you change any of the text font elements that may just override your the uh, this row element here so if you do that so now I'm just gonna show you where you can make uh, this interesting inherent row feature of salient I'm not gonna do on my site because uh, my site is actually a live site but uh, what you would do is you go to salient header navigation go to transparent header go to inherit row color turning this on will allow your header to take on the background color of the row that it passes click on that save it and then when you actually like scroll down or scroll up it will actually go to uh, this nav bar will change uh, will change colors according to the background color of that row it's pretty cool. It's very cool, in fact. Again, this is my site, so uh, I'll use a test site next time. But I just wanted to show you that real quick. Um, and But that is exactly how to do that. So I hope this helps. Uh, this is part two, where we kind of dove into it, uh, dove into everything. We did, we went over the padding, transform, text colors, uh, different uh, transparency options different text color options and we'll go more and more in the future over everything so so this is a continuing series i hope you enjoy them thank you so much please like comment subscribe talk to you soon